Okay, welcome to the Crescent Mountain uh, Muzzle Loaders. Uh, we're uh, building muzzle loaders here, as you can see. Um, well, these actually start out from a grown maple, sugar maple tree. Uh, they're planks cut into the gun stalks. We uh, inlay the barrels. As you can see right here, we inlay the barrels. Um, this barrel is about ready to be um, set into the stalk. Uh, here's some uh, muzzle loaders that are in the process of being uh, made, not complete yet, no stain. Uh, some of the carvings, you can come in and take a look, look at some of the carvings that are on them. Uh, these are uh, just uh, being carved. These are like sketchings that we're making that we're going to slowly end up uh, finishing the carvings. Uh, here's a couple that are finished. This is a uh, black walnut. Um, uh, Jeffrey Hagen's uh, built this gun. Very beautiful gun. Uh, Jeffrey Hagen's also made this curly maple with a uh, yellow uh, brown uh, finish on it. Um, our teacher uh, built this for me years, years ago. And uh, this is what's uh, started us uh, making the muzzle loaders. He's been making, uh, my father, uh, Richard Duran, has been making the muzzle loaders for 40 to 50 years. Uh, this is the black walnut. Almost, uh, this is what inspired uh, Jeffrey Hankins to build this gun. And uh, he built almost a duplicate of one. Uh, uh, show them the other side. and Yeah, we can uh, show you the other sides. We prefer putting in the wooden patch boxes instead of your brass, which is more authentic to these older period guns, actually. Making these mother muzzle loaders is become more of a passion to us now and we're thinking about making muzzle loaders for people that are interested in getting a handcraft of muzzle loaders. These guns are not duplicated. The stocks are not duplicated at all. They're cut straight from a what is it, a twitch of wood? A uh, twitch of wood, yeah. And they're die grinded down to shape. Then most of it's filing and using your carving knives. Uh, in a patch box, they, they lift out back here. You can put your flints in them. It's all hand done. Uh, these are all hand uh, ma uh, mason nails. And they slide in as so. We use all quality products. All our locks are, what do we have here? We got mostly silers. Made by, of course, L R. Who else do we get them off of? Uh, Dorsag, uh, which is an L and R, um, and uh, the barrels are uh, coal rain barrels. We um, work with coal rain uh, firsthand. We order the barrels off of him. Go down to his shop, pick them up. Um, we are starting a web page. It'll be under Crescent Mountain uh, Muzzle Loaders. I'm going to show a presentation of us shooting these guns. This one right here has not been shot yet. My son, Jacob, has just started this gun. So I'm going to have him shooting my brown black walnut gun today earlier since it's a pretty nice day outside for once. For the Crescent got, Mountain. Yeah, so we just went through negative degree weather outside and today it's broken. It's about 40 degrees. So I'm actually going to get to shoot this muzzle loader for the first time. I can't wait. We're going to go up to Blitz and Sportsman and shoot on a range that we have out there. But you can contact us for now since our webpage isn't up at Crescent Mountain Muzzle Loaders at gmail.com. And if you have any questions, 
any comments, anything that you're you want to say to us, or we're interested in we're interested passing. in getting one of these guns built. We'd appreciate it. here and I'm going to shoot this early Lancaster style flintlock for the first time and we're going to be using 50 grains of powder. No sense in wasting powder when we're not hunting with it. I usually use about 80 grains of powder whenever I'm out deer hunting. But I'll give you a little demonstration. I'll do what I just did there. I plenty of time. I messed up and stuck my um, ball in there without putting powder and that's drastic. Go get a puller and pull the ball back out. 
real pain in the butt. So always remember to put your powder in there first. And put a little more butter on my patch here. A little much. But hopefully we get a good ignition here. My ball starter. Get that excess right off of it. I don't want to put the, it'd be a lot easier. I don't want to put the gun down. We've got quite a bit of snow lately up here. And I usually use a brass ramrod, but I forgot to bring it. So I just use the ramrod I put in the gun. Just make sure it's down in there nice and tight. Back in. Now a lot of guys, when they fill their flash pan up, they'll use actually too much powder and that gives a longer ignition. Hopefully you get a real good ignition here. I'm not going to use too much flash powder. I'm making these guns. What type Front powder? sights. What type of powder do you use? Uh, I use a 4F powder in that flash pan. I actually I think I put 3F down the barrel. But uh, hopefully we get a good ignition here. When this gun's probably not going to be hitting correct right off the bat because the front sight's going to be filed down usually a little bit. So I'm going to make the gun shoot a little low at first. And I'll show you how to do that after I take this shot. I got a double set trigger on this gun, so you got to pull back the first trigger. Now the second one will be very hairy. Just a little touch to make it go up. And that's the first shot out of my new flintlock. We'll go down here. Jake, if you want to follow me down with the camera, we'll see where it hit on the first shot. I'm sure it's going to be hitting low. I don't even know if it hit the target. I should aim a little high on the target. Usually hit low. Actually, we're shooting off to the right a little bit. It was almost dead on, up and down. Well, we're going to stop the video now, but I'm going to try another shot here and see if I can get that moved over just a little bit over to the left. But that's pretty good for the first shot out of the gun.